Post City School District, and I wanted to welcome you to this evening's school opening forum. Uh, I'm pleased to have joining me this evening Dan Martinelli, our assistant superintendent, and Dr. Deterzi, our medical director. So if you have questions during today's presentation, uh, you uh, may submit them using the parent question form. You did receive that via Parent Square. We did receive questions already, uh, which we have been incorporating into our presentation. If you, uh, if we do not answer your question during this meeting, we will be posting uh, the question and answers on our website along with the presentation and a recorded video. So we are very excited to welcome all students back to school for the 21-22 school year uh, for in-person instruction. The first day of school for students in grades K through 12 is September 7th. UPK starts September 9th. Uh, school will be in person every day, Monday through Friday. We did get some questions about the hybrid model, so every day. And students, other than holidays and breaks, and students enrolled in our career and technical education uh, will be transported daily. We also received a few questions about before and after care. We're still partnering with TSL for students in K-5 and including pre-K students at Abram Lansing, and you should have received some information from Parent Square about them as well. Good evening, everyone, and uh, we certainly appreciate you tuning in. I have a few technology highlights that I think are important for everyone to know. Our district has made several inv investments um, around technology, ensuring that kids have Chromebooks. And uh, last year was a bit of a struggle, but I think this year you're going to see it's a lot better. We're going to have Chromebooks uh, for all kids in grades 3 through 12. That doesn't mean our little guys aren't going to have access to them as well, because they will. There are additional Chromebook carts uh, in some of the class uh, classrooms. So even if they bring one that's not charged or they uh, need to borrow one for the day, we're going to have some extras. And we will continue to offer our Bring Your Own Device guest wireless program, which we found to be very successful. And please know that Google Classroom at the elementary and Schoology at the secondary level are going to be and continue to be our primary platforms that we communicate with kids and families about their assignments and what they need to do and, and some grading. In addition to that, we're going to continue to use Parent Square to communicate directly with families. All the things that we that we normally do, all the texts that you get from us, we're going to continue to use that, and we're excited about it. Thank you, Mr. Martinelli. So the major focus of, of our evening is on COVID-19 protocols. I know we did receive also some questions about the start of the school day, some school specific time frames. So the building principals will be sharing that information with you, and we will also be posting that on our website. In terms of our COVID-19 protocols, uh, we'll be presenting uh, our plan to you this evening. Our full plan will be on our website. So this is based on guidance and recommendation from the CDC, the American Pediatric Association, the New York State Education Department, Health and Safety Guidance, Albany County Health Department, and Dr. Terzi, our medical director. So just one note that this is subject to change based on additional guidance from the New York State Department of Health. Uh, we did receive some guidance as late as Friday. So uh, for those of you who were with us last year, you do know that plans are subject to change. So a little bit uh, of a difference this year versus uh, our, our plan for uh, last year. Um, we are following a layered mitigation approach. So what does that mean? So the Center for Disease Control uh, identifies four categories for community transmission, low, moderate, and substantial, and high. And our plan allows us to adjust some of our um, processes 
during these diff differing periods of transmission. Uh, right now, Albany County is currently in a high transmission zone. Uh, and, and what does that mean? On the next slide, um, you'll see that uh, there are indicators based on the total number of new cases and the percentage of uh, tests that are positive. Um, on our website, we'll be including this as well as a link to the CDC tracker um, so that you can look for which area we're currently in. So late last week, uh, Friday, actually, the New York State Department of Health announced um, that there will be a mask mandate. And so all of our staff, all the students, all personnel, all visitors indoors will wear masks. It seems like um, uh, uh, it's part of our layered strategy and it's gonna keep, keep our kids and our staff and everyone safe. I will say though, uh, cause again, we've gotten some questions about outdoors and outdoors, typically kids won't have to wear masks. Uh, there are some exceptions, like always, there's always exceptions. You know, if kids are, are outdoors, even if they're in PE or in indoor PE, and they're doing something that's very active, they might, the teacher may ask them to wear a mask. If they're outside and uh, playing uh, recess um, and they're doing an activity that requires them to be three feet for a sustained amount of time, the teacher may ask them to wear their mask. But for the most part, our kiddos will be able to be outdoors without masks. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind if Dr. Deterci, is there anything that you'd like to add to that? Or that I forgot. Um, nothing in particular I'd like to add. Um, I think this will be a improvement from the way we started last year when we were um, masking as soon as we set foot on property. And I think we're going to see a really big quality of life jump with being able to take them off when we get outside, especially early on when it's warm and we can spend a lot of time outside. Thank you, and, and Dr. Tertiusi, I I I want to thank you, you know, for always being available to us, and and make sure that the parents on this call know that Dr. Tertiusi um, is our district doctor, and and she's uh, our consultant, and she helps us. I think we bug you almost every day. I don't know, Dr. Tertiusi, but thank thank you. Uh, we we really appreciate your expertise. Physical distancing, indoors. We're going to keep it at, at 3 feet masked and that's low transmission. We're going to have to do a consultation on that when we hopefully get to that point and we're looking, we're all looking forward to that point. But for moderate and substantial and high transmission, it's very consistent. Kids are going to wear masks. Adults are going to wear masks and we're going to um, do our very, very best to maintain that 3 foot distance and we're really setting ourselves up for that. Cafeteria and eating in the in the classrooms. We're going to maintain 6 feet when the kiddos have to take their masks off. Uh, we want to keep them at 6 feet again. It keeps everybody safe. Uh, in, in some cases, in the elementary school, they're going to eat in the classrooms. In some cases in the cafeteria, and we're even going to try where possible to switch them out. That way all kids can rotate into the cafeteria and have that shared experience. At the high school and middle school, it's very similar, but I would tell you again, the important part is when kids have their masks off, we're going to really try to keep them at six feet. And uh, again, Dr. Tertiusi, I'll ask you if, if there's anything that, um, that you'd like to chime in on with that. I might be optimistic, um, but I'm really looking forward to us seeing something in the blue zone sometime this year, but as long as there's any appreciable amount of COVID and we have unvaccinated students, we need to be six feet distant when our masks are off. Thank you. So before I talk about some additional protocols, I also want to mention that masks are required on school buses, any uh, time students are riding the bus, for example, going to CTE, and this is not just a New York State Department of Health, um, but that is uh, currently a, a federal mandate. So some of our additional daily protocols, uh, hand washing, hand sanitizer, and respiratory 
edit clinic will be expected and, and encouraged as our students come back to school. We will be reinforcing this with them. Um, our cleaners and custodians will continue to do daily routine cleaning, but also daily disinfection of any moderate and high touch surfaces. And if a building has had a suspected case of COVID-19 within 24 hours, the space will be cleaned and disinfected. Um, these are the protocols, uh, the enhanced cleaning protocols uh, we followed last year, um, and also increased fresh air circulation, uh, windows and doors open uh, whenever, whenever possible. And we've replaced our filters, uh, our facilities director uh, and our custodians have um, gone throughout the building and looked at areas um, in terms of air circulation. Uh, so anything on this, Dr. Viterzi? And Ms. O'Shea, I, you know, I, I'd like to say that I, it was unfortunate that we had to get so good at this, but we got really good at this last year and we, we, we've, um, we, we've really uh, had a focus last year and that focus has continued to this year. Um, so last year uh, we had our students and staff uh, do daily health attestations. Um, these are no longer required. The reporting requirements to the state are a bit different. However, we will be asking families and staff to self screen daily for symptoms of COVID-19 uh, to let the, um, for students to let the uh, nurses, attendance people at the buildings, buildings know. And if, if students are in school um, and have symptoms, uh, uh, they will be asked to to go go home. Of course, after uh, you receive a call, um, any signs of infectious illness. Um, in terms of the return to school work, we'll continue to be following Albany County Department of Health protocols, uh, including COVID test results and physician notes when applicable. And we'll be putting more more information um, on our website, and the buildings will be sending information home via Parent Square as well. Um, Dr. DeJersey, I think this is a subject near and dear to your heart. This is probably of everything we're going to talk about today. Um, this is the hardest to enforce, and it's the most important. Um, I work in Cohoes. I take care of Cohoes families. I know. It's an incredible inconvenience when your kid is, is sick, especially when they're not that sick. But this works when people stay home when they are sick, even if you know your kid doesn't have COVID. If they've got a cold, they need to stay home till they're feeling better. And what we learned last year when we had that enforced 48 hour period after every time your kid got sick is that it's amazing what 48 hours of home with rest and fluids will do. But if you send your child to school sick, not only are you in violation of the covenant and are they going to get sent home and it's going to be inconvenient, but you're going to infect others. And then that's more parents who are going to have to take time off of work while their kids are sick. And worst case scenario, you could actually spread COVID to somebody. Uh, so please, 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 please keep your kid home when they're sick, please. Thank you, Mr. Martinelli, before you go on, um, I've been monitoring the questions and since we just recently talked about cafeteria, there's a quick question there. If the students are seated at 3 feet apart in the classroom, how will they be eating at 6 feet apart in, in the classroom? So, if you want to discuss some of the staggered plans. Sure, that, that's that's actually an excellent question. I'm going to put 2 stars on the star chart of that. Person that asked that question. Thank you. So, uh, in in walking the the buildings with the principals, and uh, particularly in in the elementaries, there's the part of the layered strategies are um, at times half the class will go to the cafeteria and half the class will remain, um, thus going from three feet to six feet. Uh, at different times in some of the larger classrooms, while the seats in the instructional space are three feet apart. Uh, there are other places in the room where we can open that up and the kids can move and, and be six feet apart. And so, you know, we're going to leave it up both to the principals and, um, and the, the teachers to ensure 
that that uh, those distances are made. But again, we walk the buildings, we walk the cafeterias, and uh, we walked uh, room by room. So. Thank you. So um, another portion of our plan is on school visitors. And during areas of low transmission, our normal visitor policies will apply uh, when moderate, just minimal restrictions uh, during a substantial zone, um, then a limit to non essential visitors, volunteers, um, and then in areas of high transmission, no, no visitors during the school day. Um, and uh, I, I know uh, that this is difficult. Uh, however, it does provide us with quite a bit more flexibility than we had last year when uh, it was uh, no visitors across the board till towards the end of the school year. So we'll continuously monitor and we, we want, we want um, uh, parents to be able to attend our events. And we are planning uh, some virtual events right now for the areas of high transmission, but we'll monitor this closely um, as we go along. And um, lastly, we've been getting a, quite a few questions about a virtual learning option for students, and, and we have one. That said, that option is really dependent upon families uh, providing uh, a, a medical note, a doctor's note that their child is immunocompromised and also a HIPAA release form so the school district can speak to the doctors. But the remote instruction would be provided uh, to grades in grades K through 12, and that would be provided through our capital region BOCES. Most likely it would not be our teachers and um, they would stick to a curriculum uh, that has been identified by BOCES that meets the New York State standards. It, it would not necessarily mirror all the exact curriculums that we use in our classrooms here. So um, we're, we're, we're just um, careful to make sure that we tell parents that we can't just offer a virtual learning option uh, to all students this year. In fact, uh, we know that in many cases, kids getting direct instruction from the math teacher in the math classroom, from the ELA teacher in the ELA classroom um, is in many ways what kids uh, will benefit most from. Dr. Dutersi, do, do you have an opinion on that? I don't think any parent on this call. Well, I'm not going to say any parent because we, we all, all of us doctors have a handful of kids that have actually benefited from remote learning. But, you know, as with everything else in the plan, um, I'm sure the state will provide more options if it turns out that, you know, we are unable to contain COVID in schools. But so far, everything we know about COVID, even Delta, is that with appropriate mitigation strategies, we can contain it. Um, the only thing I'd add is this is obviously a conversation for each parent to have with their individual physician, but the consensus seems to be that most doctors are not going to consider the sort of asthma, eczema, allergies, triad as immunocompromised. Um, that wouldn't meet the medical definition of immunocompromised. So I don't anticipate seeing a lot of kids qualify under this criteria, but that's obviously something you'll have to discuss with your individual doctor. Thank you, Dr. Dutersi. Thank you. So uh, at this point in time, uh, we uh, can address some of the, the questions that we have been receiving. If there's a question that you sent that is uh, more of an individual question, we do have your email. We will be emailing you back. And even if it's a, a question with some um, specific uh, uh, medical issues, uh, we'll, we'll we'll make sure we we touch base uh, with each of you individually. So um, one question is: um, Is there an opt out um, for parents for the mask um, requirement? And I think uh, Mr. Martinelli mentioned earlier uh, that as of Friday. Uh, New York State Department of Health, the governor's office mandated the mask requirement 
in school um, for students, personnel, visitors. Uh, however, uh, if a student or a person has a medical um, or developmental condition that prevents them for, from wearing a mask, um, they may be exempted. The process uh, involves getting a note uh, from your medical doctor, a signed HIPAA release form. It goes to uh, to our offices, uh, and then and then we proceed from there after we have conversations um, with the doctor. Um, there's also some questions about quarantining, and uh, so we follow the direction of the Albany County Department of Health in, in this area. And um, they're in the process and we'll be reviewing and incorporating of sharing, um, sharing di some directions with us. Um, it looks like at this point uh, that it won't be as widespread uh, in terms of, so for example, last year at one point in time, we were having to quarantine uh, entire classrooms, and then later on, we were able to to look at the students sitting uh, around um, uh, the uh, if there was a positive case. So it looks more like at this point in time, it will be more targeted, so not widespread classroom. Also, um, there's a difference in terms of quarantining if a if a person is vaccinated uh, versus unvaccinated. At this point in time, uh, we are uh, being told that if a person is vaccinated and is not symptomatic, if exposed to a positive case, they will not need to quarantine. Symptoms will need to be monitored. There's a recommendation for uh, a COVID test after five days, but they will not need to to quarantine. So this will have impact, especially um, on the numbers of students who need to quarantine at our middle and high school high school levels. And again, we're going to be getting specific guidance. And once we do, we will share anything to that, Dr. Deterzi. I think the lack of symptoms is very important. Um, the COVID vaccine will, even with the Delta variant, um, it will keep you from getting COVID. Maybe not the slam dunk that it was earlier in this year, um, but it'll still do a good job. But what it's more likely to do is make you have a milder case that's less risk to you, but you'll still be at risk of other risk of infecting other people. So if it, whether you're vaccinated or not, if you have symptoms, you shouldn't be at school. Um, and if you're exposed and you're vaccinated and you get symptoms, you should most definitely be isolating and testing as soon as possible and you should be vigilant. Um, Anybody, I mean, there's there's tons of places to get a COVID vaccine at this point. Maris has sponsored a couple in school. Um, our office will give them during during morning walk-in hours, five days a week to anybody who wants one. New York State will give you one. I think anybody who wants a COVID vaccine knows where to find one, but I'm also available if anyone wants to talk about it. Thank you. Um, so uh, a few other questions. Uh, questions um, in terms of what we've already uh, t touched base about breakfast and lunch uh, served, um, masks having to be worn outside, as, as Mr. Martinelli uh, mentioned, uh, masks will not need to be worn outside except in um, you know, certain cases of phys ed uh, is having a contact uh, sport activity where students are going to be closer than three feet together um, for a period of time. Um, one, uh, some, some good news for, um, for parents who, uh, whose students like to sing. So there, there have been some changes uh, as well. So as long as students are um, you know, uh, six feet apart, um, we are going to be uh, able to, um, students can sing. Uh, we are having in-person extracurricular activities this year. Uh, important in everything that we do, our teachers will continue to keep seating charts. Uh, we'll look at what the um, extracurriculars are and see if there's any modifications needed in terms of 
of seating or activity, but we, we want our children back. We want them to be able to fully to fully participate and we want to, uh, you know, in, encourage encourage them to be able to further develop and grow their talents. Um, so, um, well, the younger kids, uh, yeah, so mask breaks, there will be mat, there will be mask breaks. Um, not, not just during lunch, there will be, um, mask breaks throughout, throughout the day. Um, and, um, if there are specific, uh, medical questions, we'll reach, we'll reach out to you, uh, individually. So. It looks like that uh, talks about answers most of the questions. Um, there's a few uh, questions not about um, uh, the, our safety plan uh, about lockers. Um, I can tell you that the high school will be using lockers this year. The, the middle school is going to wait and not use lockers at the start of the school year and um, and and go from and go from there. I don't know, Mr. Martinelli, if you want to address address that. And then there, and unfortunately, no, we do not have CDTA busing this year. That's another another question. Um, but uh, um, in terms of the bus passes through the school school district, um, so but we will answer all of those other questions on our Q and A. Mr. Shea, at the uh, at the middle school, one of the reasons that we decided to hold off using lockers is. Our, our hallways are, are team based. And so, unlike, you know, the high school, the kids really might have uh, to travel. More distances and um, may need really to really use a locker at the middle school. You know, the core subjects are, are very close to each other. So, instead of having kids congregate at the lockers uh, for extended period of time, we, we thought it would be better for them to start the year. Much like they did the entire last year. Um, you know, bringing in maybe just a small string backpack works really well for kids, and I think they're going to do just fine. So, Dr. Duterzi, while you're here, there is another question. It is about quarantining, but it's about quarantining after being on a vacation. So, as far as I'm aware, the that those quarantine rules uh, are no longer. Um, mandated by New York State Department of Health, is that correct? It depends on where you quarantine from. Um, if you went someplace much cooler than any of us got to go this summer, mm -hmm. um, the CDC has a whole travel list of places that are on the banned and restricted travel list, and you probably should have had to, uh, you should have had to um, do paperwork, but unless you traveled someplace where they would have notified you, or you yourself know that you were exposed or you're concerned, um, then just, you know, we all get a little sick when we come back from vacation, so please monitor yourself. But there's no need for a formal quarantine unless uh, some government official told you you were under quarantine. Of course, obviously, if you haven't traveled yet, this is next week. Lord knows all the rules could change by next week, so pay attention. Um, so again, the importance of really monitoring any symptoms you have and where um, your child has and um, and proceeding cautiously. And so, Dr. Terzi, any closing closing remarks? I can only speak for how I feel. My intellectual doctor brain knew that we weren't out of this at the end of the school year, beginning of the summer. But I know I felt a little disappointed that all of a sudden we had this midsummer surge. Um, I sort of learned two things from this summer. One, um, I had exactly two students in a sleepaway summer camp who felt that the I can still come if I have a cold, even though my COVID test because my COVID test was negative. So I know my cold isn't COVID. So I wound up with a summer camp full of kids with colds. So please don't send your uh, please don't send your kid to school sick. Um, <laughs> And uh, the other is that this really does feel like deja vu, uh, deja vu all over again, as they say, but there are so many things that are gonna be different this year. Our kids are gonna be learning in school. And from what I've seen, that just makes such a huge difference to them socially. So I don't think it's gonna be completely risk-free, but I think it's risk mitigatable. And 
I'm really, really, really support Cohoza's decision to push having activities and having in person learning and so on and so forth. And, you know, I and your individual doctors are there to shepherd your family through the uncertainty, but it's, I really do feel like it's time for us to do this. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Martinelli. Anything you'd like to? To add, and we are so excited, Mr. Martinelli. What is your uh, uh, what official week of being assistant superintendent? Your third, fourth, third. It's, it's exciting. Yeah. Um, I, I I would tell you though, I, what I'm most excited about is I literally can't wait to see all these guys walk back into school and see their friends and see their teachers and interact and get the focus back on in-person learning and get the math and the writing and the ELA and the science and the social studies and even the gym class in, in, in their head uh, where it belongs and um, get those instruments back out and use those voices. So I, I think I think this is going to be good for everyone. And parents, I just want to thank you for your, your support and um, I look forward to our continued work together. As mentioned, we'll be putting the Google slides, the, the video and the question and answers uh, on the on the web and we'll be alerting attention to them via parent square. If when you look or even before that, if there's a question that you have that uh, wasn't answered, just just please feel free uh, to to reach out to us and we'll be happy. Uh, to answer uh, any of your questions or find you someone who can. So thank you so much. Uh, Peggy, can I cut you off? Yeah. There's a question that's come up three times in the chat. Um, and it basically says, what are we going to do for instructing our students when they are under quarantine? Um, I sort of feel like I know how that goes, but I bet there's a ton of parents on this chat whose kids were virtual last year who have no idea what quarantine looked like for the in person instructed kids last year. I don't want to step forth and say, well, it's going to be, we're just going to do what we did last year because that's not my place. But I wonder if, are we at a point where we can answer that or when um, we might be able to answer that? Uh, yeah, and we can definitely go into more detail. So thank you for bringing my attention to that. Uh, I did not see the chat. I have a QA. Uh, a, a spreadsheet. So um, our teachers are going to be um, at the elementary, as Mr. Martinelli said, using Google Classroom and and posting um, assignments, lessons on Google Classroom uh, at the middle and high school. Teachers will be utilizing uh, Schoology for that as well. Students will be able to um, pick up their work, and we. Um, we are working through uh, some uh, a series of uh, ways to assist students who are on extended quarantine uh, using our academic intervention service providers this year. So um, students and can be uh, touch base with. Uh, there can be discussion if they're having, if they're having, uh, if they're if they're struggling. So we're putting those those plans in place, and we'll be sharing more information. Um, with parents last year at the elementary level for quite a while, if students were quarantined, uh, the entire class had to be quarantined and then the entire class switched to remote instruction. As I mentioned earlier, we're, we're now hearing that that is not something that needs to happen and it'll be a, a smaller, smaller group. If um, we end up uh, for any reason though, having to go, um, totally remote, then that's definitely something that we would be doing as well. So we'll put some more information about our plans for that as well. Thank you for drawing my attention to that. Okay. Well, thank you. And as, as mentioned earlier, just please feel free to, uh, to reach out and have a great evening. Thank you for joining us.